Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to another chit and chat video. I know that I haven't I haven't done this in a while, but I'm back now to talk about something that a lot of you have been curious about, which is my arranged marriage story. Today I'm only going to focus on one thing, which is why I decided to go ahead with an arranged marriage process. I think this is a question that a lot of you have been wondering about and so hopefully this video can be helpful for everyone. Now before we begin, I'd like to first clarify what arranged marriage is. This is a practice that is still pretty common in Middle Eastern countries, South Asian countries, Southeast Asia, even in East Asian countries and it is where two people are arranged by whoever it is it could be a company it could be their family it could be their friends to maybe meet together and see if there is any potential for sparks to fly between them and end up getting married in an arranged marriage process naturally generally ideally it is within everyone's consent it is done without forcing anyone to do whatever that they're not comfortable with and so that is arranged marriage, it's not forced marriage. Clarification. Before I explain why I decided to go ahead and do an arranged marriage, I'd like to give you guys some context on where I was at that point in time when I decided to tell my friends and family that I would like for them to find a potential suitor for me. I was around 18 or 19 years old when I decided to finally go ahead and tell them that I'm ready to be married. At that point in time, I wanted to go through a self-development process which I thought would be easier to do if I have a potential supportive partner with me who can serve as a reflection, as a reminder for me to constantly do better so that I could strive and try to work on myself to improve beyond that point of who I am at that time. Two more reasons why I felt like I was ready to marry at that time was because I have gone through this one, you know, adulting process that I think was very rapid because I was living in Japan on my own since I was 17 for university and so I felt like I was ready in terms of how I wanted to manage my time, in terms of productivity, in terms of really knowing um, how to sort out my priorities and secondly, I was also already financially independent, mostly, and had sources of income. On to the next topic, which is why I decided to go ahead with arranged marriage. The first reason is that arranged marriage did not seem like a scary idea to me. Arranged marriage, in my case anyway, I don't know how it's practiced with your culture, but for me and my family, arranged marriage was done in a very respectful manner where every opinion was considered very seriously and we all genuinely wanted the best for everyone and so because of that we knew that communication is key in this case my parents would always talk to me very candidly and honestly about who they think is the best potential suitor for me and I would also tell them my opinion and my feelings about who I was comfortable with and so let's say that I have a potential suitor if I'm not comfortable with the person and I say no then my parents will immediately call it off and if I am interested with someone then my parents will go ahead with it in ways that won't hurt anyone. This is a system that I have built with my family, which I genuinely trust. And so for me, arranged marriage in my family anyway is a lot like family tinder, where my opinion is very much valued throughout the entire process. It was very much within my comfort and safe zone. In my case, arranged marriage is generally done when there are two parents who believe that their children can be potential suitors for one another. And so before introducing them, they would trade CVs. 
And this CV is a lot like working CV, but the main difference is along with your leadership skills and education history, you also add where you think you're going to be five years from now, 10 years from now, your life plan, what you think is important in terms of child caring, child raising, and you can also throw in some random, you know, favorite Netflix movies or interest just because I think it's still important to have mutual interest between two people who are going to get married. And so that's where it begins. After you read the CV, if you approve, then you're gonna share it with your child or your student, whoever it is that you're arranging the marriage for. And if your child or your student is interested and the other party's also interested, then you arrange for them to meet with one another because you also want to know who they are beyond what is written in the CV. This is an important process because even though you only really need to know their value and whether or not they share the same life plan with you, you still need to know if you're comfortable meeting them, if you're comfortable talking with them, if you think you can raise a family with them and build a home with them. If by that point in time you're interested then you're gonna go ahead with the process get engaged get married but if you're not interested then you call it off without hurting anyone there's no hard feelings no one is offended and that is one thing that i like about arranged marriage you see whether or not they fit your vision first before you decide whether or not you're going to catch feelings. And so to me, it's a lot like playing puzzles. If you think the other person matches with you, then you maybe go ahead and move along in the process. But if you think that the puzzle pieces don't match, then you just find another one and move on. And you're not gonna think about them and cry for them before you go to bed at night. In my personal experience, I think at that time, Kat Shafik wasn't ready to be married in 2020. He wanted to marry in 2021 because he just graduated from university and as a husband, he feels like he needs to be the breadwinner and he wants to be responsible, which I genuinely respected and I understand. You know, you should be married only when you feel like you're ready. And so I told him that he can take all the time that he needs to prepare himself, but I told him that I may not be around to marry by the time he feels like he's ready and he needs to be able to accept that and so maybe because he didn't like the idea of me marrying someone else within one year um we were able to negotiate the timing and got married last year august straightforward process that's reason number two so why can't i find someone myself why does it have to be arranged by my parents well for context i was living in japan on my own and there weren't that many practicing Muslims around me. And even if there are any practicing Muslims that could be potential suitors or are ideal, you know, husband material, they're mostly there to study. We're all here mostly to study. So they weren't there to commit to someone who maybe they won't see again in the next three, four, five years. And so this wasn't really the place to do any matchmaking. The other reason is that by the time I was ready to be married, I was still a teenager, essentially adult, but you know, still in my teens. I was 18, I was 19, and a lot of the people around me were not ready to commit themselves to that process yet. And so even if I was attracted to someone, you know, there weren't really any certainty or guarantee on whether we're going to walk in the same path in the next 20 years. Because of that, it was ideal to find someone who is older who have gone through that process. Because I didn't know anyone, the best solution was to ask my parents who have an extensive network, social circle, friends who have children who they believe or think might be suitable for me. And the last reason, which is something that a lot of you are wondering, which is the matter of love. When you're in an arranged marriage, do you think you're going to be able to love them? This is slightly more complicated than maybe I can articulate in this video. But by the time I was ready to be married, having romantic affairs with someone was the last thing in my priority. And so what mattered for me the most is for this potential suitor to love God before they love anything else and anyone else. And the reason why I think this mattered most is because when you're 
serious about your relationship and your connection with God, then you're aware of how your actions, every single one of them, is accountable in the face of God. So even if they don't develop that romantic relationship with you, you know that they're still going to treat you well, the way that you deserve to be treated, with respect, because they have already made that vow. And to me, I trust that more than someone coming to me saying that I love you because of your brain and beauty and soul and whatever. I trusted someone who can come to me and say, I'm going to make a vow in the name of God to take care of you. And I'm going to try my best so that we could walk hand in hand to his paradise together. This type of love where you put God first before anything else to me is a lot more sacred than the type of love where it is romantic, but you leave God completely out of the picture. A year later, even though romantic relationship wasn't and still isn't a priority for both Kashafik and I, we know that we're still going to take care of each other. It's just common sense that you don't treat people who is family with disrespect and abusively. And so that is the main reasons why I decided to go ahead and do arranged marriage. I would like to also remind everyone though that every relationship is unique and so what worked out for me may not work out for you. And I would also like to say that this isn't a guarantee that you're going to stay with your partner for the rest of your life. Because I know that there are a lot of people who have gone through arranged marriage, trusted the process, but ended up not, you know, staying together for very long. I think what you can do really is just try your best and wake up every single day deciding that loving the other person and being in that marriage is still worth it and really as people and as human being, that is all that we can do. I hope that this has been informational for you and I hope that this answers a lot of your question. I hope that this helps for a lot of you who are in that process and I will see you again in the next video. Assalamualaikum.